Good evening, and welcome to the New Year's Eve Benefit Concert. It's so good to have you all with us here online. I'd like to welcome this evening's performers, Rosa Lamoureux, Carl Robson, Grace McFarlane, John Nasden, and Michael Bard. You're in for a real treat with these players. For me, there's something very magical about the cusp of the year, right edging up to a new year filled with hope and possibility. And tonight, we're celebrating through beautiful music and also through the opportunity to partner with Housing Up to help end homelessness. You can learn more about Housing Up at housingup.org. This evening's concert has been underwritten by a generous grant so that 100% of your contributions can go directly toward helping to end homelessness. The grant is given in honor of Judith Cecilia Dodge, St. Columba's Director of Music Emerita, and in celebration of her lasting impact on the parish and a generation of musicians. Thank you, Judy, for your inspiration and for the bedrock of musical foundation that you have set in this place. And now it gives me great pleasure to welcome organist Carl Robson.
Chopin's unmistakable pianism is evident in this third ballade, which differs from the other three. This is an epic narrative that compels, teases, and delights. From the lyrical, poetic opening theme, with its pleading question and answer phrases, to the lilting, dancing, syncopated second theme, somewhat coquettish, with a rhythmic bounce. These themes intertwine in a marvelous way, propelled towards the brilliance of the third theme, with its Chopinesque fioritura, those sparkling decorative figurations so typical of Chopin. There are different schools of thought as to the inspiration behind this ballad. I'm reminded of the German lyric poet, Heinrich Heine, whose poems were set to music in the leader of Schumann and Schubert. Heine's popular tale of the Lorelei comes to mind here, the opening theme evoking the charm of the seductive Rhine maiden who lures the unsuspecting sailor with her enchanting song. As the drama of the ballad unfolds through the dramatic development and building up to the climax, before he knows it, he is transfixed and ultimately perishes in the depths of the swirling, treacherous waters of the river Rhine. Whatever the story, this beautiful ballad remains a staple in the literature and a delight to play with its beauty, its grace, and elegance.
In the published score, Barber writes that these are excursions in small classical forms into regional American idioms. Their rhythmic characteristics, as well as their source in folk material and their scoring, is reminiscent of local instruments. They're easily recognized. I became acquainted with these pieces shortly after I first arrived in the United States as a student and found them quite compelling. This was the first published piece of Samuel Barber, an American neo-romantic composer whose music is infused with lyricism and dramatic expression. He drew on the 18th, 19th century formal structures while embracing more contemporary compositional elements. The first excursion takes us on a boogie-woogie ride with a basic 1-4-5-1 progression that permeates the world of jazz, pop, rock, as well as classical music. Full of sharp syncopations, articulation contrasts, motoric ostinato patterns in the left hand, clashing dissonances, and hints at bitonality. It calls for agility and facility and has somewhat of an improvisatory character. The third excursion takes us to the Wild West, cowboy country. Here we have a ballad, a true ballad, with a heartfelt theme and seven variations that tease with polyrhythms and syncopations and complex rhythmic figurations. Fun. All played mostly on the black keys. Though I'm not playing these tonight, the second excursion, which is a blues, and the fourth, a, ho a hoedown square dance, will also keep you tapping your toes. Enjoy.
On behalf of St. Columbus, I want to thank you for joining us online for this very special New Year's Eve concert. It's really due to the artistic vision and organizational excellence of our Assistant Director of Music, Diane Heath, that these New Year's Eve concerts have become a wonderful tradition and way for so many of us to ring in the new year. Thank you, Diane, for all that you do. Thank you, performers, for sharing your considerable talents. And thank you, videographers, sound and light engineers, for the essential role that you've played in producing this program. As Diane mentioned, all proceeds from this concert will go to Housing Up, an organization St. Columbus partners with to transform lives by creating opportunity for vulnerable families in DC. The work of providing safe, affordable housing and support services for homeless, low-income families is more than any one of us can do alone. But together, our donations can and do make a real difference. To give online, please visit columba.org. Thank you for your generosity, and Happy New Year.
fire is so delightful and since we've no place to go let it snow let it snow let it snow it doesn't show signs of stopping and i brought some corn for popping the lights are turned way down low let it snow let it snow let it snow when we finally kiss good night how i hate Long as you live.